Kazakhstan is enhancing its transit potential. The Republic's transit capacities are increasing due to the Trans-Caspian Corridor. The route is a key link of the Russian transport traffic. Meanwhile, a feeder line which opened at the port of Aktau allows to increase the freight traffic along the Trans-Caspian Corridor and develop container transportation activities in the Caspian region. The project is implemented as part of Norlijol program. International container operators express interest in our developments. There is a company which is currently applying to transport their containers from Turkey and southern Europe to Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. This year, we will put into operation the second ship. We will share our schedule with our customers in order to provide the weekly timeline of our two ships. Kazakhstan's first feeder ship, which operates between Aktau and Baku, was commissioned in April. The carrier is designed for 225 20-foot containers. The vessel transports transit freights from China to Turkey. Afterwards, the goods are delivered to Europe by railroads. The flexible route allows to deliver fruit products and raw materials as quickly as possible, which is attractive to foreign exporters. The companies which form the corridor, uh, high performing, uh, are, are uh, also very interesting partners for companies in uh, our region, in the Danube region. So, as I said, I'm here more or less as an ambassador and uh, I will take the messages uh, back also into our region. According to experts, trade turnover in the Trans-Caspian route region as well as the countries of Eastern and Southern Europe may increase up to 922 billion US dollars by 2020, which amounts to more than 300,000 containers. Kazakhstan entirely supports the United Nations agenda on improving the quality of life as well as solving global problems. The majority of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals are reflected in the strategy of the Republic. This fact was highlighted by the Assistant of the UN Secretary General, Miljana Solyaric Eger, at the Astana Economic Forum. The UN intends to coordinate with the Government of Kazakhstan and the Asian Development Bank on the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals in Kazakhstan. Sustainable Development Goals are 17 goals that tackle all different aspects of development. The environment, social inclusion, gender inclusion, reducing inequalities, making the seas and the oceans uh, sustainable again. They tackle economic growth and poverty reduction. They tackle a lot of issues at the same time. If we don't tackle these issues at the same time, then we won't have a sustainable development. So we have to bring all the actors together, the financial institutions, the private sector, the government and the civil society in order to do that. In Kazakhstan, work on implementation of the UN Sustainable Development Goals has been continued since 2015. The country's national prioritized areas outlined in the strategic and program documents have been evaluated for consistency. According to analysis of the Institute for Economic Research under the Kazakh Ministry of National Economy, the Sustainable Development Goals have been covered for almost 80% in Kazakhstan. The adopted program is designed until 2030. This summer, Kazakhstan will present a national review on implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals for the first time at a high UN forum in New York. Kazakhstan will talk about achievements and the role of NGOs in implementation of these goals. A large amount of work has been done in the Republic. Almaty is hosting the 16th Eurasian Media Forum. More than 700 delegates from 43 countries are attending the event. As part of the Media Forum, seven original masterclasses will be held by leading worldwide media professionals. The classes will be held with the support of the Samruk Kazina Trust Social Projects Development Foundation. On the first day, prominent media personalities discuss about mobile journalism. The mobile, journalist, mobile journalism is very holistic. You have, to, you have to develop the story, write the story, shoot the story, edit the story and publish the story. 
uh, and it's very holistic. So it's, it's, a, it's a person who can do all of those things and do them well. The forum participants also talked about the latest media trends. For instance, freelancing is becoming more popular. How profitable is the work of an independent journalist? How does it differ from other professions? How is it effective to be a freelance journalist? Well, to be a freelance journalist, you have to have lots of ideas, lots of energy. Uh, you have to be prepared to take on risk. You have to be brave. The Eurasian Media Forum will continue its work tomorrow. Panel sessions are planned where international experts will gather in discussions united by a common theme, the world today transforming reality. Media experts will discuss the future of digital journalism and the use of artificial intelligence. Kazakhstan and South Korea plans to strengthen cooperation in digital area. The delegation of Mayor's Office of Nur Sultan studied Seoul's experience in development of the Smart City project. The delegation was shown an online interactive whiteboard which shows every district of the city. Mobile operators provide the Mayor's Office with information on the city population and the number of foreigners. In the next three years, smart centers for the Internet of Things will be installed in Seoul which will detect and report the dust in the air and road traffic. The delegation also visited the call center. The work of this center is similar to the one of a single contact center, Aikumek, in Kazakhstan. The artificial intelligence system processes appeals of city residents. The delegation also visited the Secretariat of the World Smart Sustainable Cities Organization. We discuss the e-government systems of the digital mayor's office in Seoul with representatives of Nur Sultan. Our organization will cooperate with the mayor's office of Nur Sultan in development of a smart city project in Kazakhstan's capital and other cities such as Almaty and Akkol. We like the experience of South Korea very much. For example, they receive 19,000 different appeals per day from residents of Seoul. The mayor's office of Seoul tries to solve all this work very quickly. Kazakh team of startups developed an online service aimed to significantly facilitate agricultural operations. The program allows agrarians to monitor the crops without going out into the fields by visiting agistic.kz website. The platform performs analysis of space imagery and provides farmers with detailed information such as yield density, fertilizer content, soil moisture and other aspects at any time. The developers believe that the main advantage of the system is that it allows farmers to address issues that they identify with the help of this service. It was just an idea in 2017. We received support from Nazarbayev University Incubation Program. We collected enough documents to apply for various grants and receive first funding from Nazarbayev University's Commercialization Office. In March 2018, we began recruiting our team members and started implementing the project. Agronomists and agricultural business owners can also obtain information such as weather forecast and snow thickness. A user just needs to enter the identification number of his field in our web service. Based on the number, we identify the field's borders. Afterwards, we send a request to European and American agencies where we download the space images, process them and send them to the user's account in a visualized format. The user can plan his farming activities based on these data. Currently, the platform is used by about 30 farms in various regions in Kazakhstan. The developers expect the number of users to increase several times in a year. The project of the young researchers sparked interest in neighboring countries. Kazakh agrarians are actively introducing modern technologies. As part of the digital transformation of the agro-industrial complex in the country, at least 20 digital and 4,000 advanced farms will be created within five years. Automation of processes will increase productivity and reduce costs, said farmers from Kostanai region. They began to apply new technologies in their farms three years ago. Almost all agricultural machinery is equipped with GPS navigators and tracking chips. Automatic detection of crop diseases has been successfully tested, which allows reducing the cost of mineral fertilizers. As a result, this can further reduce the chemical effect on the crop field. <laughs> Yeah, 
There are a lot of benefits from digital transformation. Now we can find out the whole history of the field, how many years it has been sown, what kind of crops was grown during the particular years, and what fertilizers were used. Now, using the satellite, we can also determine which areas need to be fertilized. New technologies can reduce both time and money at least by 25 to 30 percent. Farmers in Turkestan region have also benefited from the advantages of digital farming. Automation has increased the volume of milk yield and improved quality indicators, experts say. For example, one robot milker can milk 70 cows three times a day. Old robots milked one cow for seven to eight minutes. This new robot manages to milk in five minutes. As a result, one robot is assigned to milk not 60 but 70 cows. Ideal conditions for cows have been created in one of the farms in Almaty region, which uses a new method of milking. Climate control has been introduced as well as an automated milking system has been established. Nearly 2 billion tenge was allocated for implementation of the project, which was based on public-private partnership. We have drawn from creating conditions for staff and cows as well as creating comfort and food. The project is designed for 400 heads of cows. If we can further expand our food supply, then accordingly we will increase the number of cows. Digital transformation of the agro-industrial complex will improve the quality and production volumes as well as facilitate activities of farmers. A joint Kazakh-Belarusian enterprise will be opened in Aktube. By the end of the year, the elevator manufacturing plant will be launched in the city. According to data of specialists, the first products will be ready in December. 201 million tenge of foreign investments have been invested into the project. Local authorities will support entrepreneurs in providing land and communications. In the first stage, two workshops, particularly welding and sheet bending, will be held. During the sessions, cabin doors, cables and frames will be built. There is no such production in West Kazakhstan region. Secondly, using convenient transport routes of the Aktube region, the project can sell and trade off its products. Thirdly, we believe that this project will always have its distribution channels taking into account the situation in the housing market, the projects implemented under the state Nurlijer program, and the Department of Housing and Utilities on replacement of elevators. Digital technologies and internet play an important role in the modern world. These developments contribute to the successful development of economic sectors in advanced countries. Experts believe that information security is a crucial aspect of online technologies. A forum in Tashkent provided a platform to discuss internet governance policies in the Central Asian countries. Internet Internet should be a safe, convenient and fast-moving environment. That is the way we will be capable to introduce digital transformation in the economy and implement various developments related to digital modernization, such as electronic insurance and many other digital services, including medical and healthcare developments. This environment should be safe and should be governed. Digital Kazakhstan program is being successfully implemented in Kazakhstan at the moment. The latest technologies have become drivers of the economic growth and internet is used in all sectors. Kazakhstan's achievements in IT industry showed an example for other Central Asian countries. Experts believe that the Central Asian countries should develop a joint international legislative mechanism in order to ensure security in the World Wide Web. I believe that it is time for us to develop a common international legal mechanism which will regulate certain new technological developments. At the moment, there is a lack of general preventive regulations and there is a lack of single recognized rules of conduct in the sector of information and communication technologies. Existing resolutions which have been adopted to date regulate only certain aspects of digital activities. We can see that there is no systemic vision or a comprehensive approach to regulate threats existing in this sector. Системного видения комплексного подхода для регулирования 
тех угроз, которые в этой сфере на сегодняшний день существуют. The participants developed recommendations on cyber attacks prevention on the internet based on international practices. At an event in Bishkek, foreign and local experts underline the importance of reading and discuss the ways to promote books among young generation in the area of digital developments. The conference is being held in order to raise awareness on the importance of reading in the society and address reading developments in regard to young people and children. According to experts, libraries have to meet modern technological requirements. Therefore, significant changes need to take place in the operations of book repositories. The main goal of electronic developments is to provide services to both real and online readers. At the moment, modern libraries offer more than books. Our book repositories provide a large-scale platform for people's education, partnership and communication. Currently, libraries go beyond their facilities and contribute to the widespread promotion of books, both electronic and hard copies among readers, so that this type of information prevails in people's minds. Liberians argue that there is a reading crisis in the world. However, they believe that books allow people to learn languages in detail and expand vocabularies. Books remain the main achievement of human civilization. There is a different perception of text in the digital world. People's minds comprehend them in a different way. Conventional libraries harmonize information while there is an overload in the digital space. Scientists and experts adopted a resolution as a result of the event in Kyrgyzstan. The document contains precise recommendations for the permission of reading books among youth. Kazakhstan has great potential for developing renewable energy. Today, there are 74 renewable energy facilities with a total capacity of almost 680 megawatts. Out of these, seven renewable energy facilities have been commissioned since the beginning of this year. Until the end of the year, 10 other facilities will be commissioned. The Jambil region is one of the leading regions. Renewable energy technologies in the region have been used for eight years. There are four hydro, three solar and three wind power stations with a capacity of 168 8 megawatts. Construction of two other large stations has started and will be completed in September 2019 and 2020. Until 2023, 25 renewable energy facilities worth over 500 billion tenge will be launched in the Jambil region. Our climatic conditions are very suitable and favorable to generate electricity by using the sun, wind and water. 25 projects will be implemented until 2023. Therefore, we will attract domestic and foreign investors. In 2020, the number of renewable energy facilities in Kazakhstan will be increased to 95. In 2021, this number will reach 119. The share of renewables in the country's total energy balance will be systematically increased to 50 percent by 2050. As part of the Youth Year, Kazakh State Academy Symphony Orchestra gave a concert in the Kazakh capital. The event's principal conductor was Yernar Nurtazin, and the leading musicians were Yermek Kurmanayev, Anar Kamelyinova, and Yevgenia Karimova. According to the conductor, the team worked hard to prepare for the concert. At the event, the musicians performed works by Sergei Rachmaninov, Beethoven, and Shirin Bazarkulova. At the concert, which was held to mark the youth year, we will perform compositions by young Kazakh composer Shirin Bazarkulova. 
We will play the melody of Aisha from the play The Moon and Aisha. Therefore, we had enough time to get a clear understanding and better idea about these compositions and we have an opportunity to demonstrate the result of our hard work at this concert. I enjoyed preparing for this concert with the Symphony Orchestra of Nur Sultan. All team members are professionals. The conductor is wonderful. Since the first rehearsal, we established good relations with the musicians. I believe that our efforts will result in the audience's standing ovation.